Hey everyone, and welcome. Today we're tackling lead code problem 812, largest triangle area. It sounds like a geometry problem, but don't worry, the core idea is pretty straightforward. We'll break it down step by step. So here's the task. We're given a list of points on a 2D plane. Each point has an X and a Y coordinate. Our job is to find three points from this list that form a triangle with the largest possible area, and then return that area. Simple enough, right? Let's look at the first example. We have five points. As you can see on the screen, some are on the x-axis, and some are on the y-axis. We need to try different combinations of three points. For instance, we could pick 0, 0, 0, 1, and 1, 0. That forms a small triangle. But what if we pick 0, 0, 0, 2, and 2, 0? That forms a much bigger one. Our goal is to find the absolute biggest one. So how do we solve this? The most direct way is often the first one you think of. Brute force. Let's just try everything. This means we'll form every single possible triangle from the given points. Calculate the area for each one. And simply keep track of the biggest area we've seen. This breaks our problem down into two main questions. First, how can we write code that reliably picks every single unique group of three points? And second, once we have those three points with their x and y coordinates, what's the formula to find the area? Let's tackle the area part first. Luckily, there's a fantastic mathematical tool for this called the shoelace formula. It looks a little intimidating, but the idea is simple. You just plug the x and y coordinates of your three points into this formula, and it spits out the area. You don't even have to worry about side lengths or angles. We'll see exactly how this looks in the code. All right, here is the complete code for the brute force solution. It might seem a bit dense at first, but let's break it down into its key parts so it makes perfect sense. First up, the loops. This is how we pick every combination of three points. We use three nested for loops. The first loop picks a point at index i. The second loop picks a point j that comes after i. And the third loop picks a point k that comes after j. The structure is a classic way to guarantee we get every unique triplet without duplicates. Inside the loops we get our three points. Let's call them p, q, and r, multipede. Then, we plug their coordinates directly into that shoelace formula we just saw. So we're calculating half of the absolute value of an expression. That expression is the x of p times the difference in y's of q and arranged by plus the x of q times the difference in y's of r and p and so on. After we calculate the area, we compare it to the best answer we've found so far and update it if this new area is bigger. And you might be thinking, what about an edge case? What if three of the points fall on a straight line? Well, the beauty of the shoelace formula is that it handles this automatically. If the points are collinear, the formula will correctly calculate an area of zero. Since we're always looking for the maximum area, a zero will never be chosen unless all possible triangles have zero area, so we don't need any special checks for this. So let's talk about performance. Because we have three loops nested inside each other, the time it takes to run grows very quickly as the number of points, n, increases. This gives us a time complexity of big O of n cubed. For space we're very efficient. We only use a constant amount of extra memory for our variables, so that's a space complexity of big O of 1. So to wrap things up, the main lesson here is that a brute force approach, while maybe not the most efficient, is often a perfectly valid and easy to implement solution, especially when the number of items to combine is small, like 3. And we learned about the shoelace formula, a really useful tool for computational geometry. By combining these two ideas we can solve the problem effectively. If you enjoyed this problem and want to keep practicing, the learning doesn't have to stop here. I've organized all my video solutions into handy playlists. Whether you're looking to grind through more leak code easy, medium or hard problems, or you want to master a specific topic like sliding window or dynamic programming, I've got a playlist for you. It's the perfect way to focus your study sessions. Go to the playlist tab and find a playlist that fits your goals. Hope this leak code solution breakdown made sense. If it helped, give that like button a click, maybe subscribe for more, or drop a comment if you have questions. Make sure to turn on the notification bell so you know straight away when I upload a video, because I upload videos daily. This channel doesn't make any money from sponsorships or ads yet, so if you're feeling generous, there's always the Boba Fund. Keep coding, and I'll catch you in the next one.